Hey everybody, Mark Edward Lewis here from cinemasound.com. Today I just want to run over some speed help for Adobe Audition. How do we get Audition to maybe work a little bit faster, especially if we're doing high track counts like many of our CinemaSound members are doing uh, and finding some you know, stuttering and starting and not quite getting the playback that we want. Well, I have it from the mouth of the head of development from Adobe Audition, Mr. During Gleaves, some pointers to help us speed up Audition and get better performance. Let's roll. One of the first ways that we can speed things up is actually by slowing things down. And if we go to preferences and audio hardware, we'll see our buffer size. And we don't want this buffer size to fall below 128. Ideally, it's above 256. Remember that even though we have one, two, and 4K capabilities, your audio interface may not support that. And if you use one of these and it doesn't support, you're gonna have all kinds of earfuls of digital artifacts. So we wanna be careful about that. Also, we want to look at our memory and make sure that we have plenty of memory allocated because if it's trying to use your hard drive, even an SSD, you know, even though an SSD is 100 times faster than a hard drive, your RAM is 100 times faster than that. So we want to make sure we've got as much of the program in RAM as we possibly can. And then with respect to drives in general, you know, audio files take up very little space in comparison to video files. However, if you've got a lot of audio files happening throughout your timeline, your hard drives are going, 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 finding them all over the place. And if you're using a RAID, even though RAIDs are typically faster than regular single drives, if you have a lot of small audio files happening, a RAID is always a mistake. Because as a hard drive comes around, the head has to wait for the data to get to it, right? Well, that's fine on a single hard drive. But if you've got three, four, five hard drives spinning, Every time that we need a new piece of information, it, the hard drive has to spin, and this one has to spin, and this one, and this one, and this one, and the heads are constantly waiting for data, which on a big file is okay because it can sort of read ahead and get what it can where it can. But if it's lots of small little files, we're just constantly waiting for that read lag to occur time and time and time again. And that will absolutely slow down Audition because Audition will play anything that it doesn't have the data for and we're chunking and waiting and hiccuping and gasping for data in the bandwidth. So we wanna use single hard drives, which is not great. Hybrid single hard drives, which is a little bit better or SSD drives, which is best. Now a dual hard drive RAID 0 is probably not the end of the world if you've got lots of little audio files, but uh, an SSD is best. What I use is a three RAID drive SSD system, which I've never had any issues with at all, as you might imagine. Now, with respect to this as all, it should go without saying that we shouldn't be using network drives, which also cause issues of latency to go get the data over network and come back on a network that's maybe base T100 or a thousand, much, much slower than any hard drive or uh, USB or SATA or eSATA. A bus could ever be. So we don't want to do use network drives. Look there to solve that first if you're having issues. And naturally, old drives, right? If you've got a drive that'll only output 30 megabytes a second, first of all, just upgrade that drive. And then you should have a much better result. In the effects rack, if you're using a lot of reverbs, that can really lug down your computer, as can many denoise and dereverb plugins. We want to make sure we're using them judiciously and use pre-render when necessary to help save your CPU from overloading and getting bus underrun errors. Also remember that any plugin that is in red is not a plugin that really is designed to be used in real time. And this even says this, don't do it. If it shows up in red like this, it's a wonderful sound, but you're definitely going to want to pre-render that track so that it's not in your face and causing you all kinds of issues because it will. In fact, one full reverb will wipe out a 24 core Mac without any trouble at all. And lastly, video, and probably most, most poignantly, because video, especially when it's dynamically linked to a Premiere Pro project, is going to lug down your computer quite a bit. And unfortunately, Audition doesn't really use video or VRAM or your video card very effectively yet. Soon it will. But right now, it's lugging on your computer. And if you're sending in a 4K image from a dynamically linked Premiere session, you can be sure that most of what your computer is doing is managing this picture. So what we want to do is ideally burn a much smaller resolution picture. And what will also help is if we click on the video tab here, close, undock, panel groups, and we can see scaling. 
If we're scaling, that can also cause more computer issues, but not too many. The big issue is resolution. And here we can select half quarter or eighth resolution. And, you know, an eighth resolution picture looks pretty God, lousy, even on a small, uh, fact, in yeah, a small stage our... like this. But having it stop at full resolution takes no further computer power once you've actually achieved a stop and you're good to go there. Uh, let's see. Let's take a look at what one quarter looks like. Not Ego, a whole lot better, that, but it's a little bit more works. viewable. But this allows you to uh, use up much, much less of your computer resources to play video and it allows you to focus more on audio as necessary. Again, remember that the rule of thumb is the more the compression, the more it lugs down your computer. The less the compression, the easier it is on your computer, the harder it is on your hard drive. My strong suggestion is that you use low compression video, H.264 HQ or higher if you dare, and make that your video choice. Put it on a separate hard drive or a separate media from your audio so that Audition can be pulling easily from one source over here and not having to do much computing at all to decode it with the lower compression and the higher file size while doing the audio and all the other computa computations it has to do over here on another uh, hard drive situation. And this will free up resources and drive bandwidth to for, you to for you to be able to use as many plugins as possible and use Audition to its fullest. Now, anytime that we have a stuttering or stopping of Adobe Audition, we need to first check our buffer. And whenever that buffer is somehow, first of all, not compatible with the audio interface that we're using, many times an audio interface may not have a 2K buffer, even though Audition will give that to you, it can cause massive problems. And of course, never use a buffer if you're doing any kind of track count more than eight, uh, less than 256. We want those buffers to be 256 or higher. And of course, if we're recording, we need to be very, very careful because that latency will be in effect and cause our vocalists or ADR talent to be confused. So it needs to be brought down to maybe 64 while muting unnecessary tracks and turning off other plugins. Hopefully this video has been helpful to you. If so, please come subscribe to us here at the YouTube channel and come visit us at cinemasound.com where we have hundreds and hundreds of articles and videos to help you get that professional and unfair competitive advantage that Hollywood filmmakers have for sound and immersion and get that into your productions. Until then, we'll see you in post. Even if you're